We want to see Sozo in this room and Sozo in our lives. And we just want to be living sacrifices. We want to see signs, miracles, and wonders in this room, in this church, in this youth group, God. We want to see your glory. So help us with our flesh. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. All right. Well, I can tell y'all are motivated to be here by the looks on your face. Now y'all slouching like this. Um, but y'all know, when I give a word, it comes from the realest, realest part of me. And so I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, and I'm going to be real with you. Can I be real with you? Do you guys give me permission to be real with you? Okay, great. Um, so I've been lazy this week. <laughs> Lord, help me. Um, I've been super busy and super consumed with just life, things I got to get done, right? Uh, my dad came into town, and uh, although that's a lot of fun, it's a lot of time. It's like, wake up at 7.30, get to my aunt's at 8.30, eat breakfast, then go do something, then 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock lunch, then go do something, then dinner, then, you know, driving back home, then go to sleep. It was, it was just one right after the other. It was meet this family member and go to this person's house and, you know, go meet this family and go shopping and go take the car to, I don't know, my sister's car needed to get something done. And so it was just like, it was just nonstop. And I had no time to like really spend time with my husband because he was really busy and no time to spend with Spockety Walk, which was like just hurting me because I was like, I'm leaving my child at 7.30 in the morning and I come home at 10 o'clock at night. And Spockety Walk did not take that well. He was like, when I got home, he was not like, hey, girl, where you been all day? He was like, who are you? Do you even care that I exist? So that hurt my feelings. And then did I have time to spend with God? No. But I should have made time. Does that make sense? But I just ra I was so busy running around, I ran out of time. And then it was my birthday this week. I said it was my birthday this week, um, so that took up a lot of my time, you know, just people loving on me and telling me how wonderful I am. Just kidding, guys. Um, but that took up some of my time with a couple of dinners and, like, lunches I had to go to, and um, they surprised me here at church with a lovely afternoon lunch, so that was just so beautiful for me. And then the big switch happened on Sunday. I mean, I'm just telling you guys, like, the things I got to do. Plus, I work. And it was just a lot. And so I just didn't stop to really let the Holy Spirit guide me. I was just on autopilot. How many of us just get things done and sometimes we're on autopilot? Like you just have to get things done and so you got to do them like this. So you're not really like, oh, Jesus, please bless me. Tell me what to do. Like, you're just like, I got to go. I got to get there. I got to get it done. And that was me this week. And, man, did I suffer. And so I'm going to take you guys back on Thursday. Thursday, me and Joel had dinner, lunch with my dad. I'm not sure. It's been a blur. And um, I'm sitting in the car, and we're driving. And all of a sudden, I hear the Holy Spirit saying something to me. So I look at Pastor Joel, and I'm like, hey, if you, do you want me to help you? I can probably, I probably have a word for Sozo Youth. I can probably preach this Wednesday. And then he was like, you're already preaching this Wednesday. And I was like, huh? And he was like, yeah, I made the schedule. Didn't you know? And I was like, oh, you showed that to me like three weeks ago. And like, I forgot because I've been so busy. And um, so I was like, all right. So in that moment, I wrote down everything, right, in my notes as fast as I could. And the way that I remember it was that, like, it was just pouring out. It was just pouring out, and I was like, my fingers could not go fast enough to catch everything that the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me. And that's how I remember it. But how many of us, sometimes we remember things, and it wasn't like that? We remember it to fit the narrative, or we remember it just a different way, and we're like, oh, did that really happen? So then I was like, all week, I was like, I got it. My, my sermon's in my pocket. It's on my phone. I'm just going to have to, you know, whip it out a little bit before and sit down. And when I sit down, God's going to pour out more, and it'll be good. We're good to go, you know, like easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That was not the case. When I opened up my notes, I was like, who wrote this? Because none of it made sense. It was like everything was misspelled. I guess I was typing so fast. It was like mumbo jumbo of words. And I was like, oh my gosh, now I have to start from the beginning. And I did not 
have, like, I felt like I had ran out of time. And not only did I feel like I ran out of time, but I also felt like, oh, my goodness, I didn't do my due diligence. I was lazy. I failed. I kept saying, like, how could I do this? Like, Sozo is so important to me. How could I just let this happen? And I have, and I tell you guys this for a reason. Because do I want to tell you this? No. I want to be like, I got it. No big deal. Preaching's easy. Uh, no. Um, I tell you guys this because I deserved every bit to come up here and say, I failed you guys. I was lazy. Like, you guys should throw tomatoes at me for sure. But God is so good. He, in my panic, I called a friend. They prayed with me. I just said, God, like, I really want this to go well. I love, I love Sozo Youth. You would help me. And he did. And I, and I tell you guys that story of how I failed because I want to give God all the glory for every time I get up here. It is not me. It is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Good. You're paying attention. I got one amen. And so, yeah, you guys, that was my week this week. So are you guys with me? Do you guys forgive your youth leader? Do you guys pour out a little bit of grace and a little bit of mercy on me? All right, great. I'm glad that we're all friends still. Amen. Um, so I just want to say, has anybody ever done that before? Have you ever had like a project that you waited to the last minute to do or a paper that you've known about since like day one of class and you're like, oh, it'll be easy. Oh, I got this. Amen. Amen. Every week, amen. Um, or let me take it a little more serious, a little, a little different. Have you guys ever um, been at home and your parents will be like, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be home at this time. Take the chicken out of the fridge for dinner. Or um, make sure your room is clean before I get home or else I'm, I'm taking away your phone or you're not going to that part that you want to go to or blah, blah, blah. Punishment. And then all of a sudden you hear the car in the driveway and you're like, oh, my gosh, I forgot the chicken. Oh, my gosh, my room is still, is still a mess. Anybody? That's happened to me a couple times. And it's not because we didn't want to take the chicken out. It's not, it's not because we, didn't, we wanted to get in a fight with our parents or we wanted our parents to come and be like, I knew it. No, 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 no. I can never trust you with anything. Right? But it's just, man, what, ha what happens? We get distracted. I get distracted a lot, a lot. Um, or sometimes I took a nap for too long. I just, you know, fell asleep. And then I woke up and I was like, oh, sorry about that. Um, I've been scrolling for too long, right? And I just get distracted. Um, sometimes this happens a lot when, like, I have an event to go to or, like, a party or something. And I know what time I have to leave and when I have time to be there. But I'm in the shower and I'm, like, having a good time in the shower. Or I'm just sitting there thinking in the shower, like, all those shower thoughts we have. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, I've been in the shower for 40 minutes. Like, what happened? Or I don't know if boys go through this, but girls go through this a lot. Like, if your makeup ain't right or your hair ain't fixing to be right or your outfit doesn't fit the way you think it should fit and you planned it, and now you're going to start all over from day one. Let me tell you guys, if I, don't have a, if I don't have an outfit ready the day before, you best believe I'm going to be late because I'm going to wear, put on 10 shirts, 10 different pants. I have 20 pairs of shoes out, and I'm just lost. So I learned to plan ahead. Amen? But we've all done that, right? Or have it, has anybody ever done this? Oh, pop quiz. And then you're taking the pop quiz, and they're like, time's up. And you're like, I'm on number three, and there's 50 questions, and there goes my grade. Like, we just sometimes, we don't give things the amount of time or the amount of energy, or we don't give things what they require. And so the Holy Spirit is setting us up today. Are we all in one accord that this has happened to, the, to us one time or another? We've all fallen short. We've all felt this pain of like... Ugh, I'm late. Ugh, I got an F. Ugh, I should have done that sooner, right? What? Yeah. And so God really wanted to tell us today, and the Holy Spirit set us up, just to tell us that are we giving God what he requires of us? Are you giving your Christianity what it requires of you? Like, take a moment. Let's do some self-reflection, and let's think. Do we give God all that he requires? Just logically from, from the people that are in this room. 
And I don't know what you do on your spare time. I see you at church. Okay, I have a limited window into your life. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to see what I see. I'm saying what I see. Do you guys give me permission to say what I see? To my observations to share with the class? Yeah. Um, so do you guys think that coming here once a week or twice a week is giving God all that he requires or is setting you up to be successful in your Christianity? Do you think praying once when you wake up or once when you go to bed or once when you eat an In-N-Out burger that's, that's growing your Christianity uh, a ton, like so much. You're like walking on water. No? Um, do you guys think by taking a seat here and scrolling through your phone when you think nobody's looking during a sermon, do you think that's helping your Christianity? I mean, I'm not saying names, but if it's you, the shoe fits, then wear it. And I say this lovingly, okay, guys. I know right now I'm being a little harsh, but as I was typing this out, as the Holy Spirit was ministering to me, because this week I failed to do all that God has required me to do in leading this youth group. So I say this from a humble place of like, I get it, been there. But the thing is with church is that, I don't know, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but sometimes we, cut, we people who don't come to church or people who, that have ideas about church, they think that church is too fluffy. That, oh, we're just like clapping hands and hello, brother, good afternoon, sister. Like, we're just like that. And that we don't get into the nitty gritty. We don't talk about what's really going on in our lives. We're just surface level. But then when I talk to people about their lives and I start to point out things in their lives like if they are doing all if they are doing what's required of them to follow Jesus then I offend them then they that I'm too much in their business so do you want me to be in your business and care about you and love you healthy or do you want me to leave you alone and let you do whatever you're gonna do and just hi brother on Sunday hi sister on Wednesday like which one are you here for I, I don't know, but I, I don't play games. Once I, I got saved and I knew that God was real and Jesus died for me, and goodness, I just couldn't look back. I couldn't turn a blind eye. And so I knew I had to keep myself accountable. I knew I had to give God more of me. I had to do everything that he's requiring me to do. I had to take the word of God and really apply it, listen to it, take it for what it is, the truth. Amen? You okay, Brandon? Okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm not offending you, am I? No, okay, good. Um, so I know that some of us, and I, and I, and I, I probably say this every ser sermon, and I, and I honestly mean it. I don't know where you guys are at. I don't know where everybody's at in their walk with the Lord. Um, but I knew, I know what God requires of us. And I know that to be a Christian, right, the Bible says all you have to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart and you're saved. And Christians are known for saying, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, right? That's our slogan, Jesus saves. Um, but I feel like that some of us just stay there. And some of us are probably just there. And, and that's okay for now, but I don't want you to stay there, okay? I don't want you to say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and then be like, cool, now I'm not going to hell. Awesome. Now I'm not going to burn for all uh, eternity. Awesome. I'm into heaven. I'll see you guys there. When I die, I'll get there in 80 years, okay? And that's how I really thought Christianity worked. That's how I thought Catholicism work worked. I was a, a Catholic growing up, and... You know, I went to church. They made me go to church. You had to be quiet in church. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hating on Catholicism because there's a lot of reverence and a lot of honor that some Catholics have, and, and I get that. But to me, I just didn't, I didn't get that I was supposed to do all this stuff on earth and then receive God at the end of my life. Like, I just bought a ticket for something I would use later. Like, when somebody gives you a saving bond for your, for your birthday, does anyone know what, the saving, what a savings bond is? 
Okay, let me tell you. It's this really boring gift that says, hey, here's some money that you'll get in 80 years, and it'll be worth $20, but it's worth $2 today. Like, when I was young, my aunts gave me this, and I'm like, uh, I want a $20 bill today because I got a pair of jeans that I'm trying to buy because there's a boy I'm trying to impress. Does that make sense? Right? So if you guys have this Jesus saves as, oh, I'm not going to go to hell, well, then you're only living at a surface level, and you're not, you're not doing everything that's required of you because you don't know what, what Jesus is here to give you. Like, I thought that I would get to, I would just do my life and, you know, be a good person and do my sacraments and go to church, Christmas, Easter, one of those, two of those. Um, you know, go to a funeral, that's, that counted as another one. Somebody got married, that counted as another one. Like, kind of like that. And then at the end of my life, I would get Jesus. But tell me why Jesus couldn't help me with what I was doing, to, what, what was wrong with my life today. Tell me why Jesus couldn't help me with my parents' divorce. Tell me why Jesus couldn't help me with my friends who were mistreating me, who were talking behind my back but then treating me like a friend at school. So then I was all confused. Are you my friend or are you not my friend? God, like, what do I do? And so what did I do? I lived by this world. And it got me nowhere, guys. And so I'm going to take it back to the question, what is God requiring us to do? What does God require of us? And I don't, and, and I don't want you guys to live a life where you're just, I'm not going to hell. Like, that's not good enough for you. Do you guys hear me? That's not good enough for you. If you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to be depressed till the day I die, or I'm just going to live with the sin till the day I die, then today's a new day because I'm going to teach you some things. Amen? And the Lord's going to speak some things. Amen? Amen? Come on, guys. Look alive. Jesus is here. And Side note, can I tell you guys a funny story when I was writing the sermon? Okay, so when I was writing this, I thought about hell and how people just get in, right? And I thought, like, oh, it would be funny if, I don't know if funny is the right word. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go with funny. Um, funny if, like, you got into to heaven, right? And you're like, oh, cool. I got into heaven. I accepted Jesus when I was 11. And, like, you know, I've been sitting ever since. But I accepted Jesus, so I'm here. He said I had a place for him, a place for me in heaven, right? And you get in, and, like, your apartment in heaven is, like, right above hell. And, like, you ain't got no air conditioning. And, like, Woo! I was just like, Lord, I'm trying to get to that central air up there where, like, I don't got to feel the flames. So I just thought it was funny because Pastor Joel was, like, sweating a lot today because it was hot, right? It was, like, 90-something. And he was like, I hate it when it's hot. I sweat and I'm so uncomfortable. And I'm like, ah, that's a good thing you're a pastor. Good thing you're living for the Lord because in heaven we'll be in AC. Amen? Sorry, just silly thoughts I have when I'm writing things. Anybody thought? I thought it was funny. It ministered to me. I want to be in that central Amen? That's funny. That's funny. It's funny for me. I don't know what you guys. I'm up here for myself. I preach to myself sometimes. Um, so I'm going to go back to what is God requiring of us. And so as Pastor Joel and I lead this youth group, as the rest of the leaders lead this youth group, as we pour out, as we serve you guys and think up games and pray every Tuesday, I had a brush with reality. I really got kicked in the face by reality this week when I was talking to a friend of mine about uh, a youth. And I was scared. I got really afraid and I got overwhelmed. And so what does that happen? I got, I was anxious, I was stressed, I felt defeated. And so I did the only thing I knew how to do. I phoned a friend, right? And I called Miranda. Everybody give it up for Miranda. She's awesome. You guys need prayer or perspective? Miranda. And I said, Miranda, I just had this crazy conversation, and, like, I, my heart hurts. I'm getting, I feel, like, literally sick to my stomach with anxiety because we have Sozo once a week, and that's it. Once a week for one hour, somebody is preaching the word for 20 25 minutes, and then how long is our youth actually paying attention? 
do they give us five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before they pick up their phone, before they start talking to their neighbor, before they start thinking about their homework or about their home life or about, you know, did so-and-so notice I wore a crop top today? Like, when their mind starts to wonder. And we have 20 minutes to reach this youth with the truth. Meanwhile, they're saturated every day by everything else. They're at school eight hours a day, five days a week. They're with their worldly friends. And they're just saturated. And, and I don't want to make you guys mad. And I don't want to feel like I'm attacking you. So I'm not. I'm just trying to point out the reality so that you guys can see it. Is that you guys are fed lies every day, all day. You're fed lies, you know. Just, and then I feel like every week you guys come to Sozo, the person preaching up here, the service needs to undo what you guys have done. We need to undo all the lies. We need to undo what you guys are, what you guys think and, and, and get you guys looking towards the Bible and, and sensing the Holy Spirit. And man, is that a lot of pressure, right? When you guys come in here, you guys are here, you guys are paying attention for this long and we got to make sure that we are hitting it on point. We got to make sure that the music is good, that you like the music, that the word is good, that it's vibrant, that you guys are paying attention, that you guys get the Bible, that you guys understand it, that you guys know the truth because we're up against so much. And I just started to cry. I just, honestly, I broke down and I was like, Miranda, I... I don't even know what we're doing. We need to have service every day. And we need to do live streams every minute. Like, I was just in a panic. And, you know, it's not my job to make sure you guys are doing everything that's required of you from Jesus. That's your job. My job is to help you. Our job is to set you up to succeed. And we do our best. You know, this doesn't all happen by accident. But I just looked at Miranda and I said, it's not fair. It's really not fair. It's really not fair. And I feel like we're in this group project for Jesus, right? And everything's on the line. It's the mother of all grades. And um, it's for all the marbles. It's the SAT and LSAT and everything combined. And it's a group project. And I don't know who I'd want in my team. Or like, you know, like, I'd want you all on my team. But are you going to be that person in the group that everybody's like, no, 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 no. Go find another group. This group's full. This group's full. You know? Are you doing your due diligence? Are you giving all that's required? Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying yourself up? Are you praying over your circumstances? Are you combating the lies that the enemy tells you, that this world tells you, with the word of God? And so are you doing everything that God requires you to do? And right now, this may be a new thought. To me, it was kind of a new thing. I'm I, yeah, I'm just going to say it was a new thing for me. I, I, I don't even know where to start. There's so much, right? I got to read my Bible. I got to pray. And then we get overwhelmed and we get like, oh, I just can't do this. I'm out. It's easier just to watch Netflix and veg out on my bed, right? And I don't want to leave you guys discouraged. I want to leave you guys encouraged. So the best way I can do this is to just tell you what the Holy Spirit said. And he said, if you want to know where to start, with where I'm asking you what's required, start with your struggles. That's the first place we need to look. And so think about it. What are you struggling with? Are you struggling with self-harm? Are you struggling with body image? And you don't think you're beautiful or you don't think you're handsome or you don't think that you're wonderful. Let me tell you guys something. And 
And I'm gonna, and this was something that was like a revelation to me when I was speaking it to somebody. And I sometimes think like, how how is the Bible true? Like, I don't get it. Like I remember being like, I don't get it. And easy, so easy. When I have a bad thought, right? When I struggle with something, I need medicine. I need something to make me feel better, right? And to me, that's the word of God. It's like Neosporin. Oh, I'm so ugly. I'm so fat. Ugh, I hate my skin. Nothing looks good on me, right? I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Whew, that feels good. That's how I cast that off myself, right? Oh, I deal with lust. I deal with lust so much. You guys got to grab a scripture and just put it on that like Neosporin, and let it heal. Let God do the healing, right? Uh, oh, I'm so dumb. I'm so lazy. I can never do anything. I can do things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. He's, he's with me. God, I'm so alone. I'm so alone. Nobody likes me. I don't have any friends. Nobody understands me. God, you're with me. And when I draw near to you, you draw near to me. Just soothe that sore. Soothe, put that, that verse on whatever you're struggling with. Oh, I feel like nobody notices me. That's a lie because I notice you. I notice everybody here. Candace notices me. Jesus notices me. Amen? Oh, I don't have any friends. Oh, I got a whole youth group of friends. And I'm going to see them on Wednesday. And I'm going to see them on Sunday. And I'm going to see them on Saturday when I go serve. And if I want to see them, all I got to do is pick up the phone and call them or FaceTime them. Like, these are things that I, I don't know what struggle you're going through right now. But it's definitely just that's how we apply the word of God to our situation. And don't be scared of, I mean, you guys know you guys Google everything. You know, how many calories are in this? You know, what was the weirdest thing I Googled this week? I don't remember. I Googled a lot of weird things. It was like, how do I spell something? <laughs> and then he was like, uh, yeah, that one. Um, but just Google it. What does the Bible say about depression? What does the Bible say about anxiety? It says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Well, then that's a verse that I'm going to repeat every single time I feel depressed or I feel anxious. Amen. Hey, Lexi, I see you. That's Lexi. Everybody say hi. Hi, Lexi. All right. So an, another verse that I like is, um, Miranda, you're going to help me with this one because I don't have it on top of my head, but um, honor your mother and father. Oh, my God. You guys, if you think getting along with your parents is hard now, wait till you're older and you're married and you have kids and they want to tell you how to be in a marriage, treat your husband, and raise your daughter and son. Like, it doesn't get easier. Like, you got to deal with your parents for the rest of your life. And so the only, the only reason I try and get along with my mother, who I'm not very close to, um, is because in the Bible it says, honor your mother and father, because then something about death. Miranda, what does it say? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Honor your father and mother, and with long life I will satisfy. So if I want to live for a long time, i got to be nice to my mom and dad so I don't die tomorrow. That's how I took that verse. Okay, Lord, I want to live a long time. I will honor my mother and my father. Like, for real, guys, this is just practical reality. And so to sum it all up, I want to leave us with this verse. And it's the only verse I'm going to give you. I know that you guys know a couple scriptures. If you've been churched a lot, you know scriptures off the top of your head. Or you're like, yeah, I heard that one. Yeah, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. But this one, I got to tell you, I was like, Lord, I need a verse. I need a verse that's going to sum this up and wow them. And I was driving, and I was like, okay, God, give me my verse. Give me my verse. You know, and honestly, I didn't think it was going to happen because, I mean, have you guys ever done that? Been like, Jesus, give me a verse. And then you're waiting. Has he given you a verse? He gave me a verse. He gave me a verse. And this has only happened like twice in my lifetime. And so he gave it to me. And it's Hebrews 10, 26. Can I have it up on the screen, please? And it says, Christ or judgment. For if we go on willingly and deliberately sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice to atone for our sins. That is no further offering to anticipate. 
So now that you guys know that Jesus saves, and now that you guys know how to apply the word of God to your whatever season you're walking in, and you know that this is just what's required of you, then you guys should be walking in more than just Jesus saves. More than just, I'm not going to hell. Because Jesus paid it all. When we say Jesus paid it all, it's not Jesus paid my ticket into, into not hell. It's he paid for everything. I love what Desiree said in her testimony today. That she was set free from self-harm. That she was set free from depression and anxiety. And that she, it's still a struggle, but she continues to be set free with it free from, as soon as she goes to God. As soon as she remembers who, who her father is and who set her free already, she can walk in that freedom again. And if you're struggling with something, your leaders are here, guys. We've been set free. We know that not only are we saved, but we're living a life to get everything that Jesus paid for. Because I don't know about you, but I need Jesus today. I need him right now. I need him every day to lead this youth group. To be nice to my mom or brother or sister. To deal with the person who's driving 25 miles an hour in a 60 zone. Amen. I need, I need Jesus to be nice to somebody who's not being nice to me. To have patience with somebody who's just acting atrocious. To have self-control when I don't want to have self-control. And that's what Jesus offers us. So everybody close their eyes. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that what you did on the cross was to save us. But also to help us as we go through this life so that we can see you daily. See you from glory to glory, God, that you are taking us glory to glory. We thank you, God, that you are going to help us with our struggles. That that's where we're start, and we're giving you the permission to ask us what's required of us, to lay that down so that you can carry that burden, so that you can really save us from that struggle, so that we can know you, Lord. I thank you, Father. just taking a look at our lives and we're seeing what we can give you what little more we can give you to just inch closer to you Jesus to know you more intimately I thank you Jesus I thank you for every person here that they are running towards the cross that they want your help Lord that they give you permission to enter into their struggles. And that all you require is their, is your is the permission. Church said, Amen. Let's all stand up.